Okay, today we're going to talk about scales and scale factor. So let's talk at the definition first. A scale factor is the factor by which all the dimensions of an object are enlarged. Let's put the word enlarged in there. So made bigger. Or reduced. Depending on what the case is, it could be enlarged or reduced in a scale drawing. Now it doesn't have to be a drawing. Uh, scale factor is used often in everyday life. Uh, two common places it's used is, first of all, we'll use um, the example of uh, maps, which is a drawing, okay, kind of a drawing. You draw a map is a, a draw of an area, part of the world, or a city, map, whatever it might be. And uh, the other case would be in, in models. So, uh, and models are in many, many uh, types of models. Probably the most common is toys, in children's toys. And uh, we, have, we have models that you build when I was a child. I built model cars, things like this. And it's not the actual size. It's been scaled down. So it's been reduced. And uh, or it could be even like a Hot Wheels car. It's a scale model of the actual thing. Or a doll even is a scale model of an actual person. Or baby. Um, okay, so let's keep moving on here. Writing scale factors. So what does it look? How do I write them? Well, there's three different ways to write them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one example would be I use the numbers three and five. So they, the word two is used. So I would write it down three to five. A scale of three to five. Okay. Or I could write that same ratio or scale. Ratios and scales are very similar uh, with um, with a colon. So a scale factor of three to five, or a ratio of three to five. Or we can use this as a fraction. As a fraction, I write the first number on top, second number on the bottom, three to five. That's exactly the same thing written in three different ways. We could also do this, say, if I want to have something enlarged, I would do it, uh, I would say three to one. So uh, it's three times bigger than the original. Or I could write it, oop, okay, I didn't just redo that again here. I should use the word two. So let's do that. Three, two, one, three, the colon, to one, or three to one, written as a fraction, in this case, improper fraction. And that's okay. And one more example was I want to have a reduced type thing. So I would go 1 to 10. So it should be 1 to 10 like that, or 1 to 10 like that as a fraction. Again, um, it's 1 tenth of the original size. OK, so uh, let's keep going down here. If the scale factor is a whole number then, like 2, then we can change it to an improper fraction, 2 to 1, right like that. Okay, or if it's a fraction, I say, uh, if it's a decimal, this word should be decimal, right? Excuse me for the mistake there. Like 0.5, then we can change it to 1 to 2, because 1 to 2 is the same as 0.5. In other words, 5.5 5 equals 5 to ten, 5 tenths, which can be reduced to 1 over 2, which is the same as that. Okay, we just try to reduce it if possible. Okay, so that's just a couple of notes on how to write scale. But what about solving scale factor problems? Well, to solve problems with equivalent ratios, we, we treat the ratios like fractions. So we write out the problem as two fractions with an equal sign between them. In other words, two equivalent fractions means they're both equal. Then we solve for any unknown value. In the specific case of having two fractions with an equal sign between them, you can use the technique of cross multiplication. Let's just put one quick little example here. I.e., if I have, um, say, let's use the original thing of three to five. Three to five. And this is equal to, because they're equivalent, so equal to, say, another 21 to x. So those are two 
ratios and they're equivalent to each other. So we've got a scale, two scale factors going here. How do we solve for x? How do we find what x is? Well, there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but one of the ways I like to do it, I usually recommend, because it works every time, is to take and change them both to fractions. The first number on top, the second number on the bottom. The x is just a number. We're going to find out what that number is. And they're equivalent, so that means they're equal to each other, right? They're equivalent. They're equal. If I have two fractions with an equal sign between them, I can solve them by doing the following. By what's called, especially if the x is on the bottom. If the if letters on the bottom, this is a good way to do it. You can any example like this, you can do it by cross multiplying. Multiplying x times three gives you three x, and then multiplying five times twenty-one, and that gives you one hundred and five. So we're gonna multiply this those together. It's called cross multiply and you put the equal sign between the two values. Well, once we have this, it's easy to solve from, from now, because all you need to do is get rid of the 3, so I get x by itself. There we go. And x equals, divide that, you get 35. So we just solve that by making those two ratios, two scale factors, into um, fractions with an equal sign between them, because they're equivalent, they're equal to each other, and then cross-multiplying and solving for x, and we get 35, x equals 35. Okay, so let's quickly do a couple more examples here. Let's start off with, uh, write some ratios. This is write three ratios equivalent to 2 over 6. So if I have 2 to 6, well, let me just, I'm just going to put this as a, I like kind of treating them like fractions. What's an equivalent ratio? Well, I can do a couple of different things. I can divide by 2 here. As long as they're the same top and bottom, it's still equal. And I get 1 over 3. That's an equivalent fraction. I want 3 more. Okay, so let's take 2 and 6 again. So 2 to 6. And I can, uh, in this case, I can actually multiply, say, by 2. And that gives me 4 over 12. That's also equivalent. That's equal. If I reduce them, they all become one-third. Or I can just do this. I can just take 2 over 6, and I can, that becomes, I could put 20 over 60. How did I get that? I just multiplied by 10, top and bottom. 20 over 60 is equivalent to 2 over 6. Okay, so I can do that. I can, I can find infinite number of equivalent fractions by multiplying by various numbers. Okay, so let's keep going here. And I think that's pretty straightforward. And do next next one here, number two. It says here, number two, are these ratios equivalent? Hmm, are they equivalent? There's a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to write it as a fraction. Both of them as fractions. Are they equivalent? Well, one way to do that is just reduce these. Reduce these to lowest terms. So I can reduce... Um, the first one here, see, I know 7 goes into both of those things. I'm going to divide by 7. Well, so let's just change color here. Let's divide by 7. And I'm going to get, uh, I do that, I get 4 over 6. Okay. And this one here, I can reduce this one. I can divide this one by 10. That's pretty obvious, I think. I get 2 over 3. Those aren't equivalent yet. Hmm. Are they not the same, in other words? But can I reduce the first one? Yeah, I can reduce the first one by... Um, divide by 2. 2 goes into both those things. And 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 goes into 6 3 times. Now that's equal to two, the first, the other side, 2 over 30 goes into 2 thirds. And yes, those are equivalent fractions. Okay? Yes. But there is another way to do this. Let me just show you one other way. It, it, it's pretty quick, pretty slick way of doing it. Again, I'm going to rewrite my, my uh, question out here as fractions. And are these equivalent? Okay. We weren't sure over here initially. Uh, 20 over 30. Well, remember we talked about cross-multiplication? 
we can do this cross multiplication little trick there and if they are equivalent the two answers should be equal so I, I do 30 times 28 30 times 28 and 42 times 20 if I do that what do I get I get 840 over here and I get 840 over here and yes they are equivalent because those two numbers are equivalent so I can do it either way I can make them fractions and reduce them to the lowest terms or I can just cross multiply and see if they get the same number okay whatever works for you last examples here we want to find oh, it's like the one I did earlier find the missing number okay so how do we do that what I told you to do was to take and write them as fractions and, it, and they're, they're equivalent so we can put an equal sign between them x over 54 and then we can just cross multiply okay so we do that I'm going to do 9 times x first I get 9x and then 2 times 54 is 108 and what I'm going to do how do I finish it off here well I'm going to divide by 9 to get x by itself those cancel out and I get x equals 12 and there's my answer x is 12 I put 12 back in there and 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 uh, put two nines over 12 or 54 I could reduce them they both become 12 over 54 becomes two nines so works out perfect okay next one uh, let's just take this one and write it again first step write it as a fraction first number on top second number on the bottom first number on top second number on the bottom there we go and they're equal it says they're equivalent got to find y now if they're equivalent what would y be well do what we just did let's take and cross multiply Make my little cross see the cross there y times 49 is 49 y and 14 times uh, 35 is 490 just use your calculator to do that and, uh, and finally what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of the 49 so we get y all by itself I want to find what y equals not 49 y so divide by 49 divide by 49 cancels out I get y by itself now equals of course that's an easy division 10 so y equals 10 and uh, okay so that's our lesson for today